Hey everyone, I'm Gregory Bowers with USF Housing Live. I'm Irvi. I'm Lizbeth. And I'm AJ. And I'm Nabiha. Stephanie Jamaica. So I'm Marnell. I'm Raekwon. And I'm Kay. I'm here with Bethany who has, for some reason, said she'll come along and try to answer some of these trivia questions. Okay. Now, if you win, you may win an above ground pool. What tree is this? That, I'm going to guess it's a maple. That is a yellow tree. They're laughing off camera, <laughs> your friends over there who are not helping you. It's a tree. It is a tree. That's. <laughs> That is incredible. Okay, try again. What kind of tree? Ooh, wow. Is it a maple tree? Take your time. Give us a letter. There's a, there's a theme. I'll give you a clue. It's fall. There's a residence hall named after maple. this tree. That's a maple tree. Very good. Big win. Maple tree. What kind of tree is this? You can do this. You can do this. That looks like the trees that you find in my rivers, I guess. One of our residence halls is named after this kind of tree. I have an idea. Cypress. Cypress? It is a cypress tree, yes. look at that! I'm Cheater. So what kind of tree is that? Is that a poplar? You are no. really close. I'm trying to okay, list off the buildings. Uh, I'm trying to think of all the You can do USF this, come on. Juniper? It's a juniper tree, uh, very good. Yeah. This is the kind of tree that might have its own dining hall. A magnolia tree? You gotta pick uh, one. A beacon? Uh, it is a juniper tree. Since I want to know right now, what type of squirrel is this? A USF squirrel. That is not a USF oh. squirrel. An orange one. Um, it is orange, but that's not what it's called. That is definitely a USF squirrel. Is it a squirrel? Okay, you're no. kind of correct. It is a squirrel, but it's okay. a type of squirrel. A USF squirrel? That is not a USF squirrel. <laughs> that is an American red squirrel. I didn't even know they had different types of squirrels. Is it a red squirrel? Do we give um, that to her? What on earth? <laughs> it is an American red squirrel. What type of squirrel is this? No. <laughs> no, a black squirrel? This is a black squirrel. Oh, Very, good. Okay. Very good. I guess that's a, that's a black squirrel. That is a black squirrel. Very good. A midnight dark blue blackberry. You should squirrel. name squirrels, honestly. A midnight dark I like your blackberry. names more than the actual squirrel <laughs> names. What kind of squirrel black is this? Squirrel? That is a black squirrel. Very good. <laughs> what type of squirrel is this? Can we keep guessing USF squirrel? It is a USF squirrel. Oh, Very good. Go. Did you spy it on the back of the paper before we started? Yes, they did. You know they did. USF a wide-eyed. It's a USF squirrel. But it's OK. It's a wide-eyed USF squirrel. What about this one? Take your time. What kind of squirrel is this? Look carefully at the photo. <laughs> it is a USF squirrel. Yes. You got that one right. That looks like a squirrel that hangs around housing. Yeah, <laughs> and so what kind of squirrel would you call it? An Andrew squirrel. Oh, it's a little too specific. I'm going to give you another chance. I don't know. This is a USF squirrel. Yeah. Go, go Bulls. Yeah, go Bulls. 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 Gregory Bowers, Sierra Rose, Maxwell Morinelli, Elisa Goldberg, Irene Naomi, Courtney Cadogan, Geraldine Paredes, June Dickens, Chris Herrera, Stephanie Jockman, Wednesday, May 16th, 2018. Coming to you from the beautiful University of South Florida campus in Tampa, it's USF Housing Live! Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. This is USF Housing Live. I'm your host, Gregory Bowers, with Housing and Residential Education here at the beautiful University of South Florida in Tampa. Our motto, best place to live, best place to work, best place to learn. Like every episode, we're coming at you live. That means we're going to answer your questions in real time. So happy to have you here with us tonight, everyone. Let's go ahead and meet our guests. We have Dr. Stephen Cerency from the American Sign Language Living Learning Community. Dr. Cerency, welcome back. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm happy to be back. And we had you here for season three, didn't we? That's right. It's been almost a year now, and I'm excited to tell you about what else happened. Awesome. We'll be with you in just a moment. Uh, first, we're going to be speaking with Alfredo Oliveira from Maple Hall. Alfredo, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me today, Greg. And you're also a returner, aren't you? I am a returner with a different role now. Well, so. let's talk about that a little bit. Tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do here. Great, I will. Um, my name is Alfredo Oliveira. Like I said, I'm a residence life coordinator in Maple Hall. So what I do, I oversee one of our communities on campus, Maple Hall, the best community, uh, sweet style, and we have around 250 residents. So you have two buildings over there, right? Maple A, Maple B? I do. Yep. 
And exactly so, the same, just half and half. So you're here first. I'm sure there's no bias at all. Alfredo says best community on the campus. And so um, and so we're just going to say a little bias, but, you know, I actually like it too. A lot of people don't know this. Maple is very similar to Juniper and Poplar. And so Juniper and Poplar was designed on Maple Hall. It was based on it. But they do look very different from the outside. So, uh, Alfredo, let's talk a little bit about this. You are the Residence Life Coordinator. That means you live in the building with the residents as a professional staff member. And so what was it that drew you into this type of work? So I live in Maple Lake, and the reason I am interested in doing this job is because I get to know what students are experiencing on campus. I get to be firsthand um, with them. If any struggles they're, they're facing, any support they need, I'm there. And it's a lively environment. Just being able to walk home where it's their home and be greeted by students and just if you have any questions, being able to answer to them. And just being like what happens on college campuses across the world, but like just look at what happens at USF, it's rewarding just to be there for the student. And like you said, it's great on campus and also the best of Maple Hall. Really beautiful spot over there too. It is a great apartment style, suite style. Um, students live there with two, uh, with a roommate and there's a bathroom in the middle. And I think they'll get to see a little bit more during our commercial break, I believe. Yeah, you and just gave it away. Yeah, we have a little video we're going to show for one uh, at the break time to see more about Maple there. Um, so there's something here called the residential curriculum practice throughout all of our communities on campus. Can you take us through what that is? Yeah, so we are entering our sixth year into the residential curriculum. And what it is is a, a scholar approach where we really, it's, based, it's, a, it's a curriculum based on research that tells us what students need at that time of the year. So it's a curriculum that we use from August to July or May until they move out and really addresses the, uh, the topics that students could help with. Um, it is every month is an approach that is more inter, uh, interactive. It's more a one-on-one rather than just putting a pizza party and just say, hey, come to a pizza party and learn about X, Y, Z, learn about alcohol. It's really addressing the issue that we know students are facing at that time of the year. Excellent. That's great for everyone to know, parents and students alike, because it shows how much thought, planning, and strategy goes into developing an experience that serves the individual need throughout the course of a year. And so that's really great you're working on that. I'm going to jump in here. we got a live question from Mark who asks us, I know I can't register for classes until my orientation, but by the time I go to my orientation, will the classes still have seats available? Mark, that's a common question and concern, and yes, there will be plenty of seats available. I like to remind all of our new students, our orientation team will let you know this ain't their first rodeo. They have done this before, and what happens is those classes, they hold seats throughout the summer, and so space is made available for every orientation session. So you choose the date that works best for you or is required if you have a particular program that has a date you need to attend, but there will be spaces in the classes that you need. That's what orientation is all about, is getting you set up for success in your first year here at USF. So worry not, Mark. Um, you want to get all your steps done, of course, but you will be able to get seats in the classes that you need. So jumping back here with Alfredo, uh, let's talk about living learning communities. You have a few in Maple, don't you? I do. I have three right now. So I have the Green Living Learning Community, the ROTC Living Learning Community, and the American Sign Language Living Learning Community. So you've got three LLCs over there and so many options for students. They can still apply, as I understand, right? They can apply. Applications are open until June 15th. So I make sure they take advantage of it. It's a great environment and a great learning uh, opportunity for them. Awesome. And we are going to be talking with Dr. Cernsey in just a moment to learn more about the ASL, that's American Sign Language Living Learning Community. But for anyone who's interested, wait till after the show, of course, but you can go to usf.edu slash LLC and explore all 14 living learning community options on campus. So, Alfredo, what are some of the general benefits of the LLC experience? So, in the LLC floors, we have a resident assistant, RA, that's what we call them here, who can mentor them and be there for them, for the resident. And Usually the RA either was in that major or in that program. So for American Sign Language, you try to look for someone for next year who lived in the living learning community this year who can really mentor the students coming in. For ROTC, we have someone in the ROTC program there. And that's one of the benefits, having that approach and having that individualized help that sometimes is not just uh, an RA for the floor, but it's an RA who have that, um, he's gonna, who experience what they're going to experience and provide them the mentorship and the support they need. So the RA is definitely more than that policy enforcement. I mean, it sounds like the resource person for all of our residents. Yeah, USF, that RAs are not policy enforcement only. They are actually there to help and mentor and support the student. 
So we want to make sure they hold the student accountable for the student code of conduct, but make sure that we develop relationships that are less longing and help students to be successful at the University of South Florida. Awesome. And I've already been getting questions in the group from our incoming students who want to know, can they become RAs? When they get here on campus for their first year, can they apply to become an RA? So in the fall, they can apply for the following year, go through the process, through the application and selection process. It's a rewarding and it's a learning opportunity for them and a rewarding a leadership opportunity on campus. So they can apply for the following year for sure. And you're looking for students who are interested in learning about student development and really being engaged in the student experience at USF. Excellent. Well, Alfredo, thank you for joining us on the program tonight. And we'll have more time with Alfredo and we'll be talking with Dr. Stephen Cernsey. But first, we've got to take a short break. As Alfredo told you earlier, we have a new uh, tour video all about Maple Hall. We're going to roll that. We have more USF Housing Live coming your way right after this. Hey Bulls, catch up on episodes you may have missed and see what's coming up by visiting usf.edu slash housing. Select About Us, then USF Housing Live. Choose an episode and get ready to live the Bulls life. Welcome home to Maple Hall, a residential community located in the northeast area of campus. Maple is steps away from everything needed to support your academic and personal success on campus. Maple Hall offers suite style rooms. These rooms are double occupancy with two roommates sharing a bedroom and a semi-private bathroom shared with a bedroom on the other side of the suite. We even provide the toilet paper. The sink is located just outside the bathroom for added convenience. The campus residential experience is all about fostering community and supporting student success. Each wing features a furnished common lobby area with a television. We call it the pod. There's also a kitchen nearby your room so you can show off your cooking skills. When it's time to do your laundry, just bring quarters or use your USF ID to pay with bull bucks in the facility on the first floor. While you wait for the cycle to finish, consider challenging your neighbor to a friendly game of volleyball or basketball at the courts right outside. Learn more on our website and get ready to live the bull's life. Hey everyone, welcome back. This is USF Housing Live. I'm your host, Gregory Bowers. You're not. Your name is, maybe it's Yanni, maybe it's Laurel. I don't really know. I've heard about this weird thing going on out there, but it's the internet, anything can happen. We're talking with now with Dr. Stephen Cernsey from the American Sign Language Living Learning Community, or ASL LLC. Dr. Cernsey, welcome back to the program. Yeah, thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Well, you got to tell us a little bit about what it is that you do here at USF. So I'm a linguist and I study languages of all types, but in particular, I'm interested in signed languages. And here at USF, we have a couple of programs that really focus on American Sign Language. And we have lots of students all over the campus that are learning ASL. Some of them are learning ASL as just for a foreign language. Others are learning it because they want to be sign language interpreters or teachers of the deaf or for a variety of reasons. And so we have a lot of interest in ASL here on our campus. And that's what I'm part of. And so we have the ASL LLC. Can you tell us a little bit about the benefits of this experience? Yeah, an LLC is really an opportunity for students who have similar interests to come together and focus on their learning 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And uh, th what's great about the ASL LLC is that we know that language learning occurs best when you're able to practice in lots of settings. So it's not just practicing in uh, you know, the classroom and answering a teacher's question, but you know, how is it that you prepare food when you're, you know, you're using American Sign Language? How is it that you uh, talk about problems that you're having with a friend or work through uh, issues that you're having outside of the classroom? People who are in the LLC get to do that. They get that hands-on approach with lots of other students that are interested, as well as with faculty members who come in and who offer that guidance outside of the classroom. Awesome. And so this was the inaugural year this past year, yeah. um, which is awesome. And congratulations for a successful first year. Thank you. Got to ask you, what were some of the big events, trips that took place this past year? So this year was really a cool year because we were able to start some sort of founding inaugural traditions that we hope that the LLC will continue. And um, so a couple of those were we had a camping trip, which was really popular. Um, I would say Three quarters of the students were able to go and the other one quarter are still complaining about the fact that they, that they missed the trip because it was that good of a trip. We also took a trip to the Florida School for the Deaf, which is located in St. Augustine. So you got, had the students able to go sort of explore historic St. Augustine 
as well as meet lots of students at the School for the Deaf. Some of those were elementary school students and some of those were high school students that are actually interested in coming here to USF and maybe one day being bulls themselves. Awesome, and so there's gotta be some new stuff coming up, right? You gotta give us a, give us a peek. What's coming up this next year? Yeah, what's been great is we've, you know, we've had the LLC and we've had all these students who've given us their input and given us a lot of ideas about what this next year is gonna look like. So not only are we gonna have that, that, that camping trip repeated, have that trip to St. Augustine to the School for the Deaf, we're also looking to create some more partnerships with some organizations uh, and strengthen some of those partnerships. So we have lots of organizations in the community, organizations of people who are deaf, uh, some various uh, interpreting organizations that we're gonna be going more off campus and doing some of those visits, as well as having some opportunities where faculty members from our department go into the LLC and provide monthly workshops. So students might say, you know, how is it that we talk about um, you know, whatever issue we're coming up against. I mean, maybe there's, there's something they've been talking about and they don't know the signs for that topic. They can submit those questions and we have a faculty member that'll come in and that'll you know, actually have a, uh, you know, uh, workshop really where they live uh, to explain to them, you know, uh, how it is to do the signs or how it is uh, that uh, they might um, talk about a certain issue or maybe even to bring some deaf people in from outside to give another perspective on that. So, we're really hoping to grow the educational component and increase the amount of exposure that our students get to the faculty members as well as to the community. So there are more collaborations you're exploring for the next year? Exactly. Yeah, these collaborations with interpreting programs, with, uh, with associations of the deaf, as well as with our ASL Bulls student organization. That's a really a strong organization that we have here at USF that uh, offers lots of opportunities for students to practice. So this, these are the things, you know, some of them are, are sort of serious workshops that happen where we have uh, presenters come in, sometimes from other parts of the nation, to speak to our ASL Bulls. Also, we sometimes have more lighthearted activities. They're having a luau this summer. Uh, Everyone I think likes that, a luau. Uh, yeah, who doesn't? Who yeah. doesn't like a luau? I mean, you, well, me in a hula skirt is really something you have to see. So, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> Uh, there's there's a lot of opportunities with those, that ASL those ASL bulls, and so we're wanting to really encourage that partnership and get all of our residents in the ASL LLC to be a part of the ASL bulls. So, um, are there more opportunities available outside the ASL community? Absolutely, yeah. There are tons of opportunities. Our program is growing. You know, we've had this uh, interpreter education program that's been going on now for um, gosh, almost 20 years. And it's been sort of a small program. It's grown now. It's really doubled in size um, in the last few years. But what's really exciting is we're starting an entirely new program, which is our Deaf Studies program. And this is for people that are not necessarily interested in being interpreters. So they're not interested in sort of listening to English and signing or watching sign language and putting it in English. But they're interested in working with the deaf community in other ways. So that might be as a teacher of the deaf. That might be as a social worker. That might be as um, you know, just somebody uh, you know, who works with deaf people in really any capacity. And a lot of those people are deaf themselves who want to get that degree. So we're excited that that program is growing because we think that a lot of people are going to be coming to USF for that program and there'll be a lot of interaction between that program and the LLC. Excellent. And so I'm sure there's some students out there who believe they're eligible but they're not sure if they should apply. What do you have to say to those students who are kind of on the fence? Yeah. Well, I would say that you know, we are looking for people who have um, a passion, an interest in this. We don't need to have only the most skilled people. So if you're worried about your own skills, you know, you're worried that, oh, my sign language skills aren't good enough, I say go ahead and apply. We're gonna, in that application process, we're gonna look at a video that you're gonna submit, and we're gonna let you know if we think you're able to come in. Again, we're not looking for experts. We're looking for people who have a lot of room to grow. So if you've had a class, maybe a formal class at a university or in high school, or maybe an informal class you know, in, a, in a community organization, uh, you know, if you've successfully completed about one class, sort of one level, then we think you might be ready to join us. I've talked to a lot of people who thought about the LLC and didn't do it last year. Every one of them has said, I really regret that. I've talked to all the members of the LLC this year, and every one of them has said that they're happy they did it. So I think that probably if you end up not doing it, you're gonna be like all those students who say, man, I wish I'd done it. And if you do it, I think you're gonna be like one of those students who said, yeah, I'm really glad it's really helped me improve my skills.
That's good to hear. And so you heard it here first, folks. If you're eligible and you're interested, just apply, right? And the worst thing that happens is you may not get into the LLC, but if you don't apply, you'll never know. Um, so right. um, I know that I think it's a Wayne Gretzky quote since it's hockey season. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Am I getting that quote right? Is anyone Something like full that. of hockey? <laughs> eh, it's Florida, but they're, you know, go Bolts. All right. So um, good luck out there, by the way. Um, and so thank you both for joining us on the program tonight. Um, this has been USF Housing Live. We're just about out of time, folks, but uh, thank you so much for joining us. I am your host, Gregory Bowers, with Housing and Residential Education here at the University of South Florida in Tampa. Our motto, best place to live, best place to work, best place to learn. We are coming at you every single Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time at youtube.com slash USF Housing, facebook.com slash USF Housing, and in the USF Class of 2022 Facebook group. And so make sure you like and subscribe so you get the notification when we go live. Our next show will be next Wednesday, May 23rd. It's all about staying well on campus. We're going to have a new panel of experts answering your questions. And of course, before we go, there is just one last thing. Go Bulls! Good night, everyone.